Morning guys, August 1st, 2023. So here I um, got to go change out a uh, gas furnace, a coil, and a condensing unit. Uh, I've worked on this guy's house before. He's got an old Bryant 80 plus gas furnace with an older AC unit. Um, everything's still working, but he wants to replace it because the furnace is getting old and he don't want to go through another winter with that um, old furnace. Uh, that's the one that had the birds in it and uh, you know, capacitors let go and uh, but he, he, I tried talking him out of it and let it ride a little longer but he wants a, he wants a new system so we gave him a price and we're gonna go do it. The AC is a, an old carrier unit. Um, he's got one first and second floor. He wants to just replace the first floor system at this point. So we're going to go do the basement system. First floor system, it's a little three ton AC unit with a 75, uh, 75,000 BTU 80 plus gas furnace. So we'll try to, try to get you some shots when I'm over there. And, uh, got a B-vent chimney we're gonna leave all that we're just gonna replace the um, place the smoke pipe over to the B-vent and uh, it's a little busy in there because there's a water heater in the way but uh, I'll be able to manage somehow I'll try to put some shots together and put a video together but I'll be there for a couple of days I'm getting started around 8 o'clock over there because he's not an early riser I guess so. Well, uh, I got the furnace and I got all my stuff. I got the furnace and the sheet metal and everything in the back there, the truck, condenser. I went pick it up yesterday at the supply house, so it all fit in my truck and we'll start ripping and tearing. All right, I'm gonna recover. This is the three ton that's coming out. Keeps getting birds, dead birds down here. I don't know where they're coming in from, but I'm gonna do it. Flipping job, gonna be a job and a half. Job from hell, mama. Number 10. That should be first floor heat, first floor AC. If I can leave it off, it's disconnected. I should, that should do it. Just cut the lines, move them out of the way for now. Look at the way this is done. I just, look at it. I just taped it. Unbelievable. Look at that. That's really nasty. I'm gonna clean all this up, make a better job. That's unbelievable. How can people do work like that? I don't get it. How can people do work like this? Look at it. I stick my hands in there. 
That's bad. Holy shit, Mom. That's flipping bad. I disconnected this return so I could walk in here. I get in and out. Disconnected the return so I get in and out of here. I believe. Hey, look at that big gap. They just taped it. I put everything up over there. I tied it and get it out of the way. And I'm going to get this thing the hell out of here. There's more dead birds in there. Huh? Yeah. Oh, a bitch. I got this. There's more of them. Right, so this is what a piston looks like. Right? And then it goes into the cap. And then it goes and it splits into the little tubes. Um, TXV would be a, a different type of device, a regulating device that had a bulb on it. But this is a piston. It's an older system. He's been using that one. They could put the filter in either way. It's the same size as the ductwork. I'll just reuse that. I flattened this out before I had it going in both ways. I gotta just straighten that out a little bit with my pliers. And that'll be better. It fits in there better. Added these rivets in here. I had to grind the rivets on the other side, on the on the track side, because it wouldn't slide in. I don't want to slide in. I just got to straighten out the edge. I cut this. But don't look at the flipping dust. Dust bunnies from hell. Lined plenum. Nasty. Cut it all apart. I'm just gonna get the the new one down here and the old one out and start fabbing it up. Stuff out here by the truck now. The coil. It's pretty rusty. Ain't crazy dirty. Blower. Condenser. See how big the mother one is. Furnace don't look bad. But, uh, gotta load all this shit up on my truck and. I got the other one out and I'm gonna stop putting the new one together. Sheet metal. And the coil there. I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep that filter assembly or not. I got another one at the house that's I think it's 14 by 20. 14 by 28. It's a bigger filter. Or 16. The filter's big enough, it's bigger than the ductwork. Well, uh, it's got a whole bunch of filters for this one. I might just leave this one. Uh, these hyperallergenic bullshit. What more of these anyway? Three M bent this guy right over the flipping table. Maybe not. Bent this guy right over the flipping table with the buying this shit. Well, uh, bent him over the flipping table and give him a how you doing? Yeah. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Gonna get a rebate, all right. Gonna get a flipping rebate. Allergy defense extra. That's flipping stupid. I mean, like this is some, some kind of purifier or some bullshit. Crazy. Flipping money maker. This thing here took all my trash out. I got the condenser set. Where it's gonna go. It's a lot bigger than the other one. 
know, it's got, you know, they got room to put another one on the other side over there. That's the second floor unit that's going to be gone too, but could have probably went with a two and a half tonner, but that's what was there, three tons, so we went back with what was there. Well, the heat exchanger looks okay on this one, but we wanted to change it, so we changed it. It's a Bryant. Oh, God. I usually save like all the wires and shit with the connectors if I use them for if I need jumpers for the jobs. I'll, I'll save the shit. The wires stuck in the truck. And I'll. I got my sheet metal over there. I cut a piece for the bottom, screwed it in, and then taped it good so it seals up the bottom. I gotta flip it over. I gotta cut the, the return grill on the side. Uh, I'm cut that into the side here. I can slide it in, put the coil on, pan it in. Secured good all the way around, and I should be able to slide this back in there and hook it up. Hook up that joint there. This is all secured, so slide in and out nice. It's gonna go in all the way. This um, this on here. I usually put it on the outside. There's there's two screws per per piece. You can see I kind of, kind of like to put it so it goes out. And then I'll, that'll take the S lock for the sheet metal to pan in the upper upper section. I think I'm gonna do is um, have this come out towards the furnace. I have to have to work on it. I think I'll have the coil come out this way. But if it's the other way, it's kind of hard to get in there because of the water heater. I think I'm gonna have it so it comes out this way. I just have to extend the refrigerant lines out, but it's not a big deal. I'll put it right here. Oh, looking too bad. I'm gonna, tomorrow I'm gonna pan this all in. I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do with this, but it's uh Coming along. It's coming along. I'm gonna probably cut this and bend this in. Make it look better. What I do is a sheet metal. I'm gonna put a patch here. I gotta take this out, put a patch there. Well on this here what I did was um you can see the cut. I made a cut and then I folded it over. This way this lines up more with this. But if not, that would have been a pretty bad... That would look better like that when I'm all done and taped it. You'll see it look a lot better. And uh, when I'm done, you know, I'll put some nice tape on there and everything's going to be taped. So i got to put S-lock on here. And S-lock on here. All the way around. Then I'll show you how I build that. This thing, this duck, this duck's uh, 24 inch, which is pretty wide. That's why that filter is kind of queer like that. This is 
usually you don't see them 24 inches wide. Usually like 18 or 20 is the width of the ductwork. Well, I left that there because that's designed for this size duck, that filter. Oh, we'll be all right. We're moving ahead with it here. So it's going to be um, six inch strips here. It's going to cut two, two six inch strips and then cut it in half. So it'll be 24 by six. And then we can slide them in and I'll show you how I mark them. On this stuff here, you don't have to cross break it because it's so short. If it's like 12 inches or so, it's good to cross break it. But these short little little skinny pieces like this, six inches, there's no need of it. It ain't gonna pop. Alright, and these are the cutters I like to use. They work really well on this. <coughs> One of the ones you want to get for cutting sheet metal. They do a nice job. I have this, all these, um, so the flange is out. See the way the flange is out? The flange is out so I could slide my sheet metal in there. Same thing on this side. So I slid the sheet metal in there. I just mark it. There, that'll, that'll be my my bend, and I did the same thing on the the same thing on the inside. I usually mark it in, so if I'm gonna cross break it, but that's I might cross break it still. It's not that big of a deal. That's how I gotta do it, and then this this will be bent over, and that'll be my right angle. So I marked it in. I uh, put this on there. Mark over an inch. It's gonna be bent. There'll be a there'll be a cut there. I'll receive the, uh, I'll bend over and I'll receive the, the S-lock going forward. I'm going to really cut it close here on the size. Really cut it close. And if you want to cross break it, it's easy to do. I'll show you. I'll slide this in there. side to that side right there right, right, where, right where it connects right where it connects and just bend it and give it a little how you doing it's a cross break I don't want to cross break it out be careful because this stuff will this stuff will slice you like razor blades be careful very careful with this stuff. <clears throat> then when I slide it in, I can bend over these edges once I get it in place. That's going to stop it from popping. See the cross break, I'll stop it from popping. I said you have to go easy because this shit is sharp. I want to get I want to get stuck. This is then you could bend this over. I don't need a piece of S-lock in here. Both sides. Four inches. What I usually do on this is uh, I'll open this up with a screwdriver like this. 
it. And then this is going to go like this. piece will come in here and go right inside there. See? That's how you do it. Once I get all everything in I can screw it together with some three quarter screws and it'll be nice and tight. Alright I'm gonna do this, slide this in. You could mark it. You cut this with the you cut this with the uh, snips and then it'll slide right into the S-lock. Again, on the outside, and then that will go right inside that S-lock. And now, once it's all screwed together, it'll be good. And then once I once I cut this, I slide it back in. I mark this side from the inside, and I cross break it, and uh, weave this over one inch so it can bend over for the next piece. Pretty simple. Sometimes you're gonna use a, a screwdriver to get this part in, but yeah. that'll be good like that. Once it's all screwed together, it'll be pisser. I can mark it on the other side now. I can mark it on the inside and be our piece. One inch over, bent over. make a cut For the next piece same thing slide it in pull it out make that cut and then I'll go right into this I'll go right into the s-lock I got this all all tied in with screws and, uh, once it's screwed in once it's screwed in and taped, when I put my tape on there, it'll be good. It won't leak. I'm just going to continue to build. I'll show you how I do the front. The way how I finish it is, uh, obviously, I put this on there and then I mark it where I need to be, right? And I cross broke it. Now what you're going to do on this is you're going to open these, these, these two end flanges up. One's there, and another one's here. I can put this, drop this thing in, drop this thing in place, like that. I just have to get it in. Gotta get it in. 
in place. I should be able to go. I'm going to have to work on a little bit, but it will go. Just screw it, screw it, glue it, tattoo it, be fine. Once you're all screwed in, everything's all fine and dandy. screws with the point on them. That's the ones you want to use. So, screw it, glue it, tattoo it. Once I tape everything, it'll be fine. Get a couple of screws loose, mama. Time for a new drill. <laughs> oh, man. Time for a new drill, mama. I'm gonna take this cover off so when we tape it, this cover will go on after. We'll get in on it. Do this piece next. It's important that you um have these, make these so none of them are rubbing. See how I moved them? Because they'll come like all strapped and they can rub. And they can wear out in time. These, these are coated. I'm not worried about those two. But these you have to make sure none of them are rubbing. Because they'll wear out. See like that one there is rubbing. On the, on the unit. Gotta move it. Don't want it rubbing. I don't want it rubbing on the... Don't want anything rubbing. It'll last longer like that. It's a little more of a chance of it. If it's touching, it could, you know, vibrate and wear wear out. Anyway, I got it all taped. I got this piece in there. I got it all taped good. I taped the seam all the way around. And, uh, she's coming out fine. Looks good. I just got to put the cover on and, and drop the electrical down here and... Electrical's gonna go on the side here. I had to move it over because of the. And then I gotta do the gas and the smoke pipe. I'm probably gonna bring the refrigerant lines in here and tie them in. Gotta whip them around or something. I'm gonna connect over there and bring them in. Gotta blow these out with nitrogen. These old lines will blow them out with nitrogen. Alright, so the electrical box is here. This comes down with a hanger to a 90 into the box. Thermostat wire. You got a red on a thermostat wire that goes to the red. Let me see if I can set you up here. Alright, what we got here? What we got here is W, which is the white, which is the heat. Green, 
G is the green for the fan. Yellow is coming back from the thermostat on yellow, which is cooling. Then it goes out on this red to the condenser. Then you got the red, which is the power for the thermostat. And then you got the common, which goes out to the condenser. So you got the common going out to the condenser and the yellow that pulls the condenser in. From the thermostat, you got the red. White is heat. Red's the feed. White's the heat. Green's the fan. Yellow is the coming back for the cooling. And I could put a common on there for the thermostat if I wanted. But that's how it, that's how you wire it. Straight AC, no heat pump. It's pretty basic. It's not rocket science. So I got the smoke pipe all done. I ran out of the smoke pipe. We'll hang it here. So three screws per unit. Three, three screws per joint. And uh, gotta do the gas pipe yet and the refrigerant lines. I'll probably do the refrigerant lines first. And I gotta do the condensate pump also. I'm gonna put it over here, come out with a piece with no bone and drop it down. And I got my line here, I probably have to add a little piece of 38 quarter in, uh 38 copper between there. And put the pump. I'm on the heat, I got the heat ready to go, just gonna make sure that it's nothing's these lines aren't touching just in case somebody turns the thermostat the cooling which they shouldn't but so we're not running the cooling yet we're still doing the heat I'm just gonna turn the heat on I got the thermostat turned up upstairs I got the gas pipe done union inside here I'm gonna reuse that this smoke pipes all done on the corner say I just uh, but I put a little piece of copper and I just extend it. I'm gonna go down, put the condensate pump on the floor. But, uh, we gotta turn this on. We gotta turn on. Turn on the gas. It should. It should call for heat. I gotta go turn the breaker on. This is all done. I'll turn the breaker on, then we can hit this switch, and she should fire up. I want to run it now. There should, might be some oil on this thing, so. Right now, it's calling for heat. I got the thermostat turned up upstairs. I'm just gonna run it. See if the smoke alarms go off in the house for a bit. Next I gotta do is uh, the refrigerant lines and the condensate. Tie in the outside unit, pull a vacuum on it. Gonna blow them refrigerant lines out. Upstairs, that might get a little smoky up there. We're going to run it for a little bit. I came down and put a three quarter by half reducer. Half-inch T and a nipple, right in. I ran the heat for a while, 10 minutes or so, should be fine. I got 75 in here. I'm gonna put it to. I'm just gonna put it to 72, so it, it cools after. All right. All right, so I come out here. 
Right down in the corner, so you can put a new corner, so pump in. Plugs right into there. Should be fine. I gotta do the refrigerant lines next. And we could run the AC. This comes up and this runs over and out. Okay, so I got the refrigerant lines just dumping out here. I'm gonna blow them out with the nitrogen. Blow them out with the nitrogen. Dry nitrogen. And just blow them out. I won't see no dryer on the thing, so I won't, I won't see no filter dryer. A couple hundred pounds. Nothing even come out. Thing was dry. Nothing even come out of it. All right, so I got the refrigerant lines in here. I gotta connect them over there somehow, and I'll probably come up high with them. Before we come up high and clip them in up top there, we gotta we gotta solder them on the other end first. Wipe them off. Um, and then we're gonna, I'm gonna put a hanger on the other side, put them up high with a hanger. I just want to make sure I get them good before I run. I don't want no leaks. And I did solder this thing up to put on the shut off over there, it seems to be leaking so. I just soldered that on there. See the drip? Oh, I can put that on there and it won't leak. She's a little... She's a little pigtail, Mama. I'm a little pigtail to her. This way here. That was the old humidifier that they were using. That's no longer being used. So we're just going to cap that cap that off for now and this way it won't leak because even though I tightened it as much as I could it was still dripping yeah, give it the old give it the old how you doing mama I'm gonna leave this I'm gonna leave this open until after I do my test and then I'll put a I'll put a piece of covering on over it alright so I put a hanger there I ran it up and and I'll just Swoop it right down and right in. Boom. Very simple. I can check this for leaks. It's right there. You know, this is... This is nice and high. Let me connect this. I'm going to put some tape on that, but... That's better. It's up out of the way, and... I would have put it in the back here. If I ever had to pull the coil out, I have to take the water heater out. After I check that, I gotta, I gotta put this return back in. 
tape it up after I'm done. I took it out so I could work in here. Alright, so I got a couple of joints. I put the dryer here. And the liquid line coming in. That's how it should be. From the condenser, this is the liquid line from the condenser coming into the evaporator. And then that's the return line. The big line is the return line. I'll put a hanger up there. I just came down right in. It'll be fine like that. I'm just going to solder up these joints and I'll be good to go. to let that stuff dry don't move it because it's um high silver count could crack it i'm gonna do the outside condenser next i don't think we can pull a vacuum it shouldn't leak i'm still gonna put the the bulb on this thing yet i want to check for leaks first before i do anything
shut these off. Now, I'm not a big fan of these, these flipping cheap ass gauges I bought. So what are we at here? Yeah, like 275, right? This one's actually yeah, about 275. And it looks like it's holding, but we're gonna just double check everything that I can. The, all the joints I did with soap. If anything was leaking, you'd hear it hissing out like a flipping savage holding good right there, holding tight. Like I said, if there was a leak, you'd hear it flipping. Hissing out like a flipping crazy woman. Holding tight outside. It's always good to double check. Don't hurt. Right, I can put the vacuum on it now and stop pulling a vacuum. In the meantime, I could, you know, put this bulb on. We do the covering and whatnot. And then we could start it and run it. It says she's holding right there at 275, so dump it, dump it and put the vacuum on it. I got my vacuum all set up here with the once I pull the vacuum and I can I can shut these off and open these valves. I'm gonna make sure that them that both shut off. They do. We should be able to run the pump. Pull the vacuum. for the TXV is right here. I clamped it on right here. Right on the line. It's going to be tight. And, uh, I don't know. Somewhere like that. Four or five o'clock is fine. Some guys like tail up, tail down. I just kind of put them both at the same. I don't think it really matters with that. This has to be tight though. It's going to be tight. Now i got to wrap it all. You know, while the vacuum's pulling, I'll wrap all this stuff, finish all this stuff up, and make sure everything's all done and ready to go before before I touch the vacuum. Alright, put another whip in there, put a hanger. Put another whip in the truck. This guy wanted to change, so I changed it. The low voltage is all hooked up. I ran the low voltage wire along here, taped it. Came in here with a low voltage. Connected right here. Put 
this cover back on. I'm going to write the date in here. It should be ready to go with the vacuum too. That's really good. 69 microns. Anything below 500 is good. Alright, so what I'm going to do is open up those caps, shut these valves, and open the king valves. That's the most important thing you can do with the air conditioner, is run that vacuum. Get all the air out, non-contaminants. Got my little wrench, take these caps off. Right now all the refrigerant is still inside the unit. I'm gonna shut these, I'm gonna shut these fucker. I'm gonna shut these off. Should be able to open these. Well, that one's really short stroking it, Mama. up all the way. Alright, I should be able to run the unit and check the charge. Check the cooling. Gauges on it, see what it's doing. See how sub cooling, we gotta let it run for a bit. But I see that at four, it's too low. We gotta add some gas. It's gonna be around nine, 10, 12, something like that. Gonna give it a little high door amount. Give it a little how you doing. I'm supposed to let it run for 15 minutes or so, but I'm gonna put this stuff in as a liquid. Alright, we'll give it a little little love in here. I'm gonna bring this suction that's gonna come up. Put in too much, gotta to kind of meter it in there. You don't want to give it too much because then, it, then it'll start slugging the compressor. So what's happening is you're, you're mixing the liquid in with the gas, so you gotta flash it in. You can't just dump in the liquid because it, it's, it's too much. You gotta kind of regulate it so when the gas comes in, it mixes with the, with the liquid so it doesn't slug the compressor. It's 
really not a hot day today. It's not crazy hot, so. A sub cooling at nine or so, that's fine. So I'll, um, that super sub coolant's at 11, which is fine. One, 125 on a suction's good. It's above 100. A super heat's being regulated with the TXV, so you can't really do nothing with that. That's it, right there. She's ready to rock and roll, mama. I'm gonna leave it right there. All right, I got the doors back on, and I got that. I turn back, and she's cooling. Don't have to go in there. Put these doors back. I took them off. It'd be easy to get in and out. Done. Put the date. Date there. Date there. She's she's rock ready to rock and roll, mama. Oh, there goes the condensate pump. None of my stuff's leaking. It's just in there. Hand. It's just in there. Dry. It's not even. Not even glued. Don't don't have to glue it. Ain't gonna leak. The heat works. The AC works. We're ready to go.